Hello and welcome back to part two of your assumptions about influences. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Here we go. They get paid a lot to do minimal slash easy work. Now, I can see how this looks like the case. Sometimes I feel like I have to justify to myself how much I get paid for an Instagram post, right? So like, Let's give an example. Say an influencer gets paid 500 pounds to post something on Instagram. And it's just a photo and a caption. You might think, oh my God, it takes them like half an hour to an hour to come up with the idea for this photo, take the photo, edit the photo, write the caption, do all of that and post it. And that's 500 pounds? 500 pounds for an hour's work? Like. What? That may seem ridiculous to you, but there is also all of the back and forth of the brand of negotiating with them, talking about the creative brief, sending content over for approval and like feedback and back again. So all of the like behind the scenes admin of like interacting with the brand, that also takes up a lot of time, but that's not what the fee is for. The fee is for all of the work that came beforehand to build up the audience that they have online, which is what the brand is paying for. So if you think about that 500 pounds fee for that piece of content, let's say 10% of it, so 50 quid is actually for the content, is for making that photo and writing that caption. That's 10% of it. The rest, that 450 quid is actually for the months, for the years of work and trust built up with them and their audience because that is what is being paid for. The content isn't being paid for, otherwise that brand would take that content and put it on their sites. But no, it's on the influencer's Instagram account because what they're paying for is that audience and those eyeballs. So it's a weird one where you're like, what the fuck? You got paid this much for like just doing an Instagram post or just making a YouTube video? But one, it's more work than you think. And two, they're not just paying for the content. The more expensive thing is your attention. Unfortunately, because capitalism. Your hobby revealed itself as a possible job just as you got to the age where you needed a job. This one 100% applies to me because I did YouTube videos throughout university and then could kind of like immediately go from graduating to making YouTube my part-time job when I left uni. They do stuff just to have something to make vids about. I think that this might be true for like daily vloggers or something or people who their whole like YouTube video strategy is about like doing outrageous things. But again, this is an assumption that I make about other influencers and about a world of YouTubers and influencers that I don't really know a lot about. So yeah, I think this potentially could be true for like daily vloggers. They use YouTube as a stepping stone for more legit forms of media. I think this is actually is true for some and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Some people want to be artists, musicians, authors, presenters, actors, like whatever it is. And using YouTube as a way to build an audience and get eyeballs on you and get the right people to notice you, I think that's a legit strategy. That wasn't my case. I just started making videos for the lols, but it has led to some of those other things, which has been really amazing. I do think it's true for some, but for others like YouTube is the end goal and that's fine too. I assume it always feels like there's a new piece of tech you should get for work. I think that also depends on like what circles you run in and like what videos you watch. Like if you are in like the tech YouTube world, then yes, I imagine it might feel like that a lot. I watch some of that content, but I'm not that involved that I like feel like I need everything. This camera and this microphone I've been using for years and I don't really feel any need to upgrade them right now. The main thing that I get like itchy to get like the new tech for is like Apple products. So like MacBooks, iPads and iPhones. That's the only thing that I get like real itches around upgrading regularly, but I am getting good at it. I've got a really old MacBook that probably needs replacing, but actually doesn't because I don't really use it that much, so. The richer they get from brand deals, the more disconnected they are from their audience. Yes and no, but I would recommend watching Tiffany Ferguson's video on this. I will link it below. I cannot remember what it's called. Something about maybe not being relatable anymore, but she does a really great deep dive into looking at influencers who their whole thing is about being like relatable to their audience. And then they get a whole bunch of money from 
being a YouTuber, being an influencer, and then are no longer relatable, but how some people who are really rich still seem to be relatable in personality and others aren't able to make that connection still. I would recommend, it's an interesting video. They are approached to work for free all the time and hate it. Yes. I don't think this is unique to influencers though. This is just unique to freelancers in general of just being asked to work for free. Influencers work harder slash more hours than we realize. If what people realize is just like the stereotypes around influencers of being like lazy and entitled, I guess it's very similar to assumptions around millennials. Then I do think that influencers work harder than what people assume, but also as a self-proclaimed hard worker. I also see a lot of influencers who I'm like, they ain't working hard enough, but then I also see loads who are like working super hard. So again, it varies, but the hours just might be different. I think around this time last year, I like tracked how many hours I worked in a week and it was like 50, but granted that was like a busy week for me and things with freelancing is that it just comes in like peaks and troughs. Right now with coronavirus, things are less busy for me and I might have like a couple of days where I have like a lot on and then like two days during the week where I'm like, I've got nothing to do. So it just, it varies a lot. They find it difficult to get a mortgage and demonstrate stable income. Yes, I mean, for me. I actually went through this. I own the flat that I live in. I made a whole video about how I managed to get a mortgage and the ways that it was split up. But for me personally, basically, I really struggled to get a mortgage and the banks wouldn't loan me enough money or a lot of money so that I could afford to buy this flat because they look at my statements and they're just like, what the fuck is this mess? <laughs> like, what is going on here? I ended up having to put down a really big cash deposit because I couldn't get a big mortgage. But hey, there's no such thing as stable income when you're freelancing. Oh, except there is when you have Patreon. That's like my one bit of stable income. So thank you, patrons. <laughs> they sometimes wish they could have nine to five again, but don't wanna give up easy money. This is an interesting one because I do often like have these moments of like, oh, I just wish I had a nine to five. But then I'm like, mm, no, I actually don't want that. And it's never the money that brings me back to the influencer lifestyle that I have. It's always the freedom and the flexibility. Because I think about having a nine to five and then I'm like, oh, but then I need to get permission if I need to go this place. <laughs> but I'm not going anywhere right now. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Just being in charge of my own schedule, being my own boss, making the decisions, that kind of stuff, having that autonomy is really important to me. So that's what I always come back to whenever I have these moments of just like, oh my God, I just wish I had a nine to five. <laughs> Most are not properly setting themselves up for retirement. Great assumption. And I actually would agree. So. Me and my friends graduated uni when we were about 21, 22 years old. And most of them got jobs and started paying into a pension because in the UK, the company that you work for, like it, it just all comes out of your paycheck before it comes into your bank account. So I've got friends who've been paying into their pensions from the age of 22. I have not. Um, I set up my pension last year, I think. Was it last year or the year before? I don't know. Um, but I was about 26, 27 when I actually first started paying into a pension. And many of my friends who are like around the same age as me, give or take, who are also influencers, I know are not paying into a pension. They do not have a pension. So you would be correct, at least in my experience of people not setting themselves up properly for retirement. But this is just not something that is taught in schools about if you are going to be a freelancer, if you're not gonna have that like pay as you earn check where your tax and your pension and everything comes out and you don't have to do anything about it. If you have to do your tax returns yourself and pay yourself a pension and do it all yourself, no one teaches you how to do that. What's that about? There's lots of sexual activity between influencers. To be honest, I have no idea what the sexual landscape of YouTubers or influencers are now, but I will say that back in my heyday, yes, this is correct. Oh, here we go, been waiting for this one. They hate the term influencer, and yes, but I've been using it throughout this entire video, and that's just because it's the word that everyone understands. I don't think it's correct though. My friend Evelyn made an amazing video recently where she like described why it makes no sense, and it's because the word influencer describes 
our function. It doesn't describe what we do. We make videos, we take photos, we create art, we might create music, like we write, like we educate, we like we do all of these things. Those are the things that we do. And then the side effect of that is that we build an audience and there are people who will listen to us and people who trust us. And we can potentially influence them in the way that they think or the way that they behave. And so our ability to influence other people is what we're paid to do by brands. So the term influencer is basically a marketing industry term that the marketing industry has used to describe all of us. But that's never what we called ourselves. <laughs> so yeah, influencer describes our marketing function and how brands use us, but it doesn't describe what the fuck we do. Extremely self-motivated. I would say this is true for me, but I also think it is necessary if you're going to be freelance, if you're going to work for yourself, you have to be self-motivated. Without a boss there telling you what to do, it's just you. Have to have a thick skin for all the hate they get. So some will get more hate than others. I think you definitely develop and build a thick skin over time but then every so often there is a day that just breaks you and it all comes crumbling down and then the next day you're fine, potentially. But yeah, it really varies on how it impacts different people and the different levels of hate that people get and the different types of hate that people get as well. I would say, I think a lot of influencers have developed a thick skin, but that doesn't mean it doesn't get to them sometimes. They know what they're doing. Does anyone know what they're doing? They do not see their audience as real individual people, but more as numbers. I think with the way that the numbers are demonstrated online and how sometimes important the numbers can seem for your career to do well, is really easy to get sucked into the only seeing the numbers thing and not seeing the people. And because of that, I know that myself and others, we have to actually make a conscious effort to see behind the numbers. It can be so easy to get distracted by them. I think seeing the people behind the numbers actually improves your connection with your audience, it improves your content, and all round makes you like a better content creator. There's a time and place just to see the numbers, and believe me, the back end of Instagram and YouTube, the analytics that they give you, I could break down my audience in all kinds of different numbers and percentages. Um, and obviously that doesn't make you feel very human, but sometimes it's useful for me to know. So it's a balance. They are pretty much only friends with other influencers. Uh, I don't know about other people, but for me, I would split my friendship groups into four? Four friendship groups? Who knows? We've got my YouTube influencer friends, and then we've got my like <laughs> other London friends. So like other friends from London who I've like met through work stuff, but they aren't like influencers themselves. So that might be like author friends of mine. And then I've got my like Manchester girlfriends who I've known my entire life. And then I've got my uni friends who I've known, oh my God, for like almost 10 years now, Jesus Christ. My influencer and my London friends are definitely kind of like a similar bubble and a similar group. But then my Manchester and my uni friends are not in those bubbles at all. And I am very grateful for them because they keep me grounded. <laughs> They're always expected to be on, have high energy personalities and always be working. I feel this, I sometimes like feel guilty if I'm not on when I have an interaction with a viewer. And yeah, I feel really bad about that, but my brain is just like, cannot perform right now. Like just sit and read book or like <laughs> exit situation. <laughs> Why am I now a robot? I don't know if we're always expected to always be working, but I do think that there is this, like we need to prove that we deserve what we have. So maybe that's a certain expectation of like, yeah, we need to prove ourselves worthy. <laughs> Some don't think about how their work endorses unsustainable capitalism. We're back at it with capitalism. And I would agree. I think that there is potentially an extent to which I do that, but I'm always like thinking about it and trying to reduce that as much as possible. But from what I see online, I also, as a viewer, see a lot of influencers. Yeah, just, I'm like, this is not good for people, for the environment, for you, <laughs> for me. But again, working within an unjust system, I don't think directly endorses it. But I do think that we should all be thinking about it a lot more and 
having conversations about it too. They are creative people, but also need to know a lot about business. Yes. I think a lot of influencers have like a creative drive to them, have this like need to like make things, whatever that is. Some might have like a business mindset to begin with. I certainly didn't, but it's been one of the really enjoyable things of learning along the way. It might not be something that every influencer is really good at, but it's something that you do have to learn. <laughs> you lie about your job to avoid explaining what you do to relatives slash on a date. I don't lie about it to my relatives, but I have lied about it on dates and I lie about it to taxi drivers and I lie about it to other people who I might just like fleetingly meet. What would I say on a date? I wouldn't lie necessarily, I would just be really vague and only tell like half truths because I didn't want to really get into it. And also I didn't want them to then go home from the date and look me up and then suddenly like have all of this knowledge about me that I didn't have about them. When when you're dating someone, it's about mutually getting to know each other at the same pace. You have a second Facebook slash Twitter under a fake name that is close friends only. I don't have a second Instagram account, but I use the close friends feature on Instagram for all of the time, but sometimes. So there are some like stories that only those guys get. And I have a personal Facebook account, but that's about it. But Facebook is meant to be personal. I have like a fan page on Facebook, which is obviously separate. Facebook is really like the only social media account that I have something that is actually closed and private. Everything else is just like, there you go, friends and followers. <laughs> you specifically, deaths not all, la mayo, stress about the ethics of companies that you work with, yes. And this is something that I stress about more and more. I feel like my standards have been getting <laughs> higher and higher, but I think with every brand that comes to me and every deal or campaign that I'm a part of, there are like lots of different criteria that I want to tick and not every campaign, not every brand is going to tick all of those boxes. I don't really have a hard and fast rule of like, they have to hit 80% of these things in order for me to work with them. I usually just go with my gut, but your gut is a great indicator if you've got experience behind you is what a mentor of mine recently said. And I was just like, yes, thank you. Okay, I will listen to my gut. But yes, I don't want to be promoting brands or campaigns that I think will have a negative impact. But one thing that I tend to look for is like a net positive impact. So maybe there's some bad things, but then maybe there's lots of good things. So one of the things I look for is like, it has to be net positive. But again, that criteria is just like entirely drawn up by me and my gut. When you're not working on social media, you use it a lot less than the average person. I don't know about others, but me, this is true for. This is me assuming how much other people use their phones. But from what I've seen from other people's screen times, mine is less. And that is like my total screen time with including when I'm using my phone for work. So if I wasn't using my phone for work, I think I use it a lot less. Sometimes on a weekend, when I just completely forget to post on Instagram, no stories, no post, nothing. I maybe have like an hour on my phone that day, maybe even less than that sometimes. So without work, I don't think I spend a huge amount of time on my phone. I've learned it's not fair to make assumptions. Influences are all too different. Yes, what a great message. <laughs> I would agree. The hardest part is how much of yourself to give to the world and how much to keep private. Yes, this is this is actually a really hard part because there is no right answer to this and yet you'll be judged whatever decision you make, especially if you have a family. And often you don't know what's right until you do something and then you, it feels wrong to you and then you have to like backtrack a bit. And once something is out there, it's out there. So yeah, I would agree that this is a really difficult balance to strike. They know their postman's name because they get deliveries so often. Our Royal Mail postman lives in the flat below us. And for a while we had a DPG driver called Noel, but I don't know where he's gone now. They get paid for collaborations with other influencers, e.g. being on a podcast or in a video. No, not in my experience. Those collaborations kind of happen naturally and the main benefit of it is cross promotion between the two creators. They have a love slash hate relationship with the job. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, they're obsessed with Pinterest. Maybe some influencers are. I, that is the one platform, oh, other than Reddit, I guess, that I'm just like, don't get it. Many are not actually showing their real life. Um, I wouldn't say people 
are lying necessarily, but even just like think about influencers who do show a lot of their lives. So that would be like daily vloggers are probably in the category of influencers who show a lot of their life or influencers who are like really active on Instagram stories. And say if a daily vlogger uploads one 30 minute vlog every day, you're still only getting 30 minutes of a 24 hour day. So there is absolutely no way to show your entire life. And actually most of it is really fucking boring. After I'm done filming this, I'm not gonna be filming myself transferring the footage onto my computer and then like writing up notes for my editor and then like refilling my glass of water and then saying hello to Dan in the other room. Like the bits that you see as the highlights, the rest of it is just like the normal day-to-day -day mundane shit that everyone else does. That you're working less hours than a nine to five job. I think I already covered this, but there was like the question about us working more. Again, there'll be some days where we don't do any work because <laughs> there's nothing to do. And then other days where it'll be like really full on. Planning videos and Instagram posts is actually a lot of work. I would agree. Yes, it is a lot of work. I spend so much time planning my content schedule and making sure that when I actually sit down to film, everything is like ready. I spent like an hour last night going through all of the comments on my Instagram stories to screenshot the questions for this video. And that was at like 9 p.m. last night. It gave me a headache. I think things take a lot more work than people realize. That's it. Oh my God. We got through all of the questions. We did it. We did it! Thank you so much for watching. I hope this answered some of the questions that you have about influencers, maybe cleared up some of the assumptions that you have. Did anything that I say surprise you or did you feel like you kind of already knew it? I would love to hear your thoughts and if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks so much for watching and I guess I will see you in next week's video. Bye!